Hi and welcome back. If you're new to the channel, my name is Vince. Thanks for stopping by. You're very welcome here indeed. So a new study out of Canada has looked at the effects that two types of social participation has on what they've claimed is successful aging in later life. Enough waffling off me. Let's jump into the presentation and let's see what this new study out of Canada on successful aging has got to offer. This is the review of a piece I read that was penned by the University of Toronto and was published in the Journal of Environmental Research and Public Health, which covered a study looking into successful aging and the effects that social participation has on successful aging in later life. And there are links in the description below to the study and to the articles I used to put this presentation together. This new study followed more than 7,000 middle-aged and older Canadians for approximately three years to understand whether higher rates of social participation were associated with successful aging in later life. The researchers only included participants who were successfully aging at the start of the study. The goal was to see whether social participation was associated with the likelihood that they would remain in excellent health. This new study drew longitudinal data from the baseline wave, which was between 2011 and 2015, and the first follow-up wave, which was between 2015 and 2018, of data from the Canadian Longitudinal Study on Aging to examine factors associated with optimal aging. It included 7,651 respondents who were aged 60 years or older at wave two and who were in optimal health during the baseline wave of data collection. The sample was restricted to those who were in excellent health at baseline, which was only 45% of the initial respondents. But what is successful aging, I hear you say? Well, the researchers defined successful aging as freedom from any serious physical, cognitive, mental or emotional conditions that prevent daily activities, as well as high levels of self-reported happiness, good physical health and good mental health. So let's take a look at the initial findings. Approximately 72% of the group who participated in volunteer or recreational activities at the start of the study were still aging successfully three years later. However, only two thirds, around 66.6%, that's still quite close, of those who were not participating in these activities were aging successfully at the end of the study. The researchers also found that those who participated in volunteer work and those participating in recreational activities were more likely to maintain excellent health across the subsequent three year study period. And they were less likely to develop physical, cognitive, mental or emotional problems. They also found that after considering a wide range of socio-demographic characteristics, the findings indicated that respondents who participated in recreational activities or volunteer or charity work were 15% and 17% respectively more likely to maintain excellent health across the whole of the study period. Mabel Ho, a doctoral candidate at the University of Toronto's Institute of Life Course and Aging, who was also the first author of the study said, although the study's observational nature prohibits the determination of causality, it makes intuitive sense that social activity is associated with successful aging. Being socially active is important no matter how old we are. Feeling connected and engaged can boost our mood, reduce our sense of loneliness and isolation, and improve our mental health and overall health. Some medical professionals are now prescribing social activities for their patients. This new intervention has been dubbed social prescribing. This is categorized as a non-pharmacological intervention that integrates primary care and community services. Social prescribing can be used to encourage older adults 
to engage in volunteering and in recreational activities. Professor Esme Fuller-Thompson, Director of the Institute for Life Course and Aging at the University of Toronto and senior author of the study said, it's encouraging that there are ways to support our physical, cognitive, mental and emotional well-being as we age. This is wonderful news for older adults and their families who may anticipate that abrupt decline is inevitable with age. It's important for older adults, families, practitioners, policymakers and researchers to work together to create an environment that supports a vibrant and healthy later life. The modified concept of successful aging introduced in this study is more inclusive than earlier studies and encompasses both objective and subjective measures of optimal aging. Most previous research on successful aging classified those with any chronic health condition as not aging successfully. In this study, participants could still be classified as aging successfully if they had chronic illness, so long as they could engage in various daily activities and were free of disabling chronic pain. As I just mentioned, this revised definition also incorporates older adults' subjective perception on their aging process, as well as their physical health and their mental health. The new definition also allows for self-reported emotional well-being factors such as happiness and life satisfaction. Most earlier studies had ignored the older adults' subjective experience of their own ageing. Well, I hope you found that interesting or informative, hopefully both. Uh, I've made some notes. So this isn't the first study to show that socialising or remaining a social animal uh, helps us to age in a healthy way. Uh, this is definitely evident in many societies, especially the blue zones. Um, indeed, here in the Philippines, the elderly are not hidden away or excluded at all by any means. In fact, I've seen this happen. If a venue is chosen for a particular activity and then the venue is unsuitable for an elderly member of the family, the venue is changed as opposed to the elderly person not then being invited. Um, it also appears here in the Philippines, and I'm guessing in other places too, there's no need for volunteer or charity work. The elderly pretty much play an active part in the family and in society right up until the day they die. So their health span goes all the way up until the day they die and or physically they physically cannot take part. And even if they are then disabled and physically can't take part, they are picked up and they are brought and they still take part in whatever the social activity is. Um, I'd be interested to see your comments in the YouTube video. Do you know people that still do this in the West? Um, or are they shipped off to old folks' homes? Or do you see people who retire and then become hermits so that they go shopping, they get the groceries, or they have them delivered. They then sit around the house, they watch TV, they play, do jigsaws, maybe they pot around the garden, but they don't go out and they're not socially active in the, the larger community. I'm interested to see what your comments are on the study and also what your comments are on the elderly in your particular sphere um, to see whether or not they participate completely or if they're then shunned or sidelined as they become older and older.